we love talking about um, what drives us as individuals uh, to be to be better, to be um, uh, better versions of ourselves and inspire others to do the same thing. Mm -hmm. So instead of sitting in a coffee shop, uh, we we figured why not press record and do the same thing and. Yes. And we were talking about what the, the topic of today's discussion would be. And um, my thoughts around it are, you know, part of the, the the very real motivation to start this project with you, Tommy, is that, you know, we love each other. We we get a lot of energy from each other. And there's a, there's a filter uh, underneath that I wanted to make sure that we turn up on a regular basis to be able to drive each other to get the most and the best out of each other to that add that extra layer and that's that accountability support and community that is so important in everybody's life whether you're a, a busy mother or father whether um you know anyone that, that that's trying to move forward in their life the power of tribe the power of accountability is so it's 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 ingrained in our dna yeah yeah it you know, man, there's, um, you know, there's a big push in the individualistic Western world, you know, to glorify picking ourselves up by our bootstraps. But I, I cannot think of any heroic individual tale where support wasn't absolutely fundamental to that individual's success. Mm -hmm. I just don't think someone can live in, in the middle of nowhere and all of a sudden become a billionaire without at the very least networking, which by definition already is uh, akin to seeking social support, you know, and um, there's a reason why social support works. There's a reason why cliches are cliches. You are who you spend the most time with. Um, it's a reason why um, Alcoholics Anonymous ensures that people have mentors and guides and people that are walking the path with you because you're just yeah. not able to do these things yourself. <clears throat> and we need to get away as far as we can run away from that toxic narrative that suggests that we are supposed to do these things by ourselves, especially when you're trying to implement drastic change. A hundred percent. And it's a typically masculine kind of trait to, uh, to express, you know, now she'll be right. Uh, I got this, you know, this, this diminishment of vulnerability, um, this lack of, being able to open yourself up to those around you. But it, it, as I mentioned before, it's so ingrained in who we are as a people. It's how we've been able to d differentiate ourselves from the rest of the animal kingdom, yeah. to be able to be parts of tribes, to be able to, um, to grow together uh, as a community. And yet, you know, you mentioned uh, being successful in business. You know, you may be able to do it on your own, but will you be happy, you know? Right. Uh, th th that's 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 another really really poignant question to ask yourself. And mm. there, you know, we can get into the nuances of, of all of this, but ultimately, there are so many layers to this. But that the happiness factor is such a big thing. Social engagement and interaction to be able to um, grow together and support yourself and put yourself um with people that are looking to achieve a common goal is a really really powerful driving force uh, to to be able to uh, generate you getting that goal individually so exactly right yeah i mean when we celebrate what are we doing we're sharing the joy with other people you know and and that's exciting you know for anyone out there that um doesn't believe us when when we say that it's in our dna it, it is you know mirror neurons discovered in the 20th century you know they're they're excited and disinhibited when when we see people doing things and therefore mimic them and we learn by doing you know children are sponges you know you know this firsthand my friend yes. you know and these things are in us so so rather than um you know um being upset at the fact that you can't you know do it yourself or whatever however whatever your narrative is um optimize your DNA and, and surround yourself with other people that share a common vision and goal. And the best thing about, there's lots of negatives about the common world, uh, sorry, the, the, the contemporary world, but social media gives you access to people that are killing it at whatever you're interested in. So consume their content and become obsessed with interacting with them digitally. And um, and you'll become who you, who you, who you ever you wanna be, which is really cool. A hundred percent. And just a note on social media, you know, you're right. There's a lot of people that, uh, you know, 
they, they cast a, a wide net around social media and they say that um, it is the devil and you, you, you become a drone. And, and you know what? You can very easily um, step into that. But if you have a sense of awareness and a filtration system for you to be able to say, right, I am going to create intention behind using this, but I'm only, I'm going to censor what comes into uh, my world because if you don't, you know, if you're not doing the thinking for you, other people will be doing the thinking for you. So to be able to use these tools to be able to develop your mind, to be able to develop your heart space and your community um, can be a, a wonderful experience and a really, really rich experience, but it requires intention and it can't, you can't go in blindly into it. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It, it's the same with anything, you know, a, a hammer can build a house or it can smash a skull. You know, Spot on. your intention is, is the most important thing. The backlash to that would be yes, but a hammer doesn't uh, get you addicted. And I respect that because I'm also addicted to my phone, but then that just requires more intention and more tribe. So, you know, I could come at you again. <laughs> and, and, and that's, that's once again, you know, like you opening yourself up and being in this space where other people around you are going on the same journey as you, you can be vulnerable with them. You can, um, you, you, you can step into that uh, that vulnerability and allow them to guide you through um, what their experiences have been. And then you can take that next step, that next level, and you can access people that have been through what you are currently going through and what you aspire to get to. Yes. So you can um, use them um, as, as resources to be able to take that next step, that next leap. And that's yeah the teachers amongst us that can can really really teach in uh, a humble and um a way that is just going to to spread love really yeah yeah definitely i think um so as a as a segue i i was having a really interesting conversation with a client um yesterday we it wasn't really psychotherapy it was more like leadership coaching um so he he came to the clinic um initially um with with you know all sorts of symptoms and dysfunction as we all do that's that's why i went to a therapist um in my early 20s and then um now he's in a he's in a much better place um um and and we were doing leadership coaching because he's a he's a manager and um one of the struggles that he is currently having is this kind of dichotomy between um helping people with effective change and also being empathetic. And we, we seem to, and the reason why I'm bringing this up is because I think the word accountability has a degree of baggage where we feel like if we're being accountable for other people, we have to call them out on their shit or, or mm. be mean or, or, or say, Hey, you're not doing as good a job as you, as you can do. And one of the discussions that we had, which we both kind of agreed on um, last night was this notion that you have to be, empathetic so when you're being accountable so let's just say you and i are being accountable together which we are to to ensure that um we we catch up once a week and, and produce content that we believe will be valuable for other people mm-hmm. specifically to the demographic that we're trying to help with our businesses um we we want to be empathetic for so from my perspective i want to be empathetic for for who paul is now but also for who paul could be so I need to ensure that I'm balancing that with, I get that you couldn't come today, but I also needed a text or whatever it was. I mean, you know, to put mine, I was late to the show today. So, mm-hmm. so you're like, ah, whatever, but then, but then you're calling me as well. So we want to kind of balance that with, I also really believe that you can become this person that you've told me that you want me to help you with. Mm -hmm, So, mm -hmm. so from that kind of leadership perspective, accountability people struggle with because it's going, Oh my God, I'm going to be called out. And it's, you know, I'm constantly be told I'm a bad person. It's like in the beginning, you said that you are really excited to achieve this vision Mm -hmm. and become this ideal person. We need to help you love who you are becoming. So there is change associated with that, and it's tricky, but it's <clears throat> important. But I love the, uh, I really love the uh, the angle that you're looking at that transformation in because I know I um, have been caught in, uh, in in the past feeling like I'm in the naughty corner if I'm not following through with what I've 
told either myself yeah. or those around me that that if I, if I haven't actually engaged or followed through in what this is, that can be a really intimidating experience. And what happens? Uh, you can you can sometimes step into defensive mode and you sure. can start to explain your your your, your actions away. But your uh, what, what I gleaned from what you were saying there was is let's re-engage in becoming stepping into the love yep. of transforming yourself into this. Yep. You know, you, you're not in trouble with anybody, you know. You're actually doing this to become a person that you want to be more in love with mm. or you, you're more in love with the process of doing this. So let's get looking forward to it. Let's let's really immerse ourselves into it. And I see this happening in, um, in partnerships, uh, in business partnerships or in, um, you know, partnerships in, 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 at home or, uh, you know, parenting. It, it, it's a very, very common uh, thing to happen. And sometimes it's really liberating to be able to say, um, you know, I fell short on this on this one. I'm going to do better because I want to do better, and I want to uh, kind of you know give to yourself to your, myself, but I also want to give to you and those around. Yeah. Me. yeah, yeah, totally, man. It's it is hard, and I have respect for it too. Um, you know, because you know we so so what happens as we develop is you know the front part of our brain that can analyze and take on different perspectives isn't really formed and you know um an ego takes time to develop a sense of identity takes time to develop but we have years and years and years of experiences some good some not so good that that the ego tries to understand mm. and if i can't take on your perspective it's self-conscious by definition so if it's a seven-year-old as an eight-year-old or whatever it is if paul hits me in the face i'm a bad person straight away, or I must have done something wrong. And a limiting belief ensues because I can't take on your perspective. Maybe Paul had a bad day. That part of my brain just isn't developed yet. Mm -hmm. So as you become an adult and you're stuck and you're finding someone, so my partner and I work with um, people pleasing anxious women. And you see um, women who are stuck, you know, and you, you would see that with busy parents as well, you know, and there's obviously nuance and context with all this, but people who are holding on to an idea of who they need to be, which is no longer sufficient for the reality that life has given them, which mm -hmm. is really challenging. And often what we have to do as coaches is um, we have to start to explore these narratives that are holding them back now because they're no longer serving who they want to become. Mm -hmm. And that's really, really challenging. And I, so I do have a lot of respect and sympathy for and empathy, actually, because that was me, of course, in my early 20s, um, you know, OCD diagnosis over here. Um, change is really hard because we become addicted to our suffering because it's who would we be without it? You know, mm -hmm. who's my new identity going to be? Mm -hmm. But if you just take that first step, well, now life has has potential for you. So that's right. And and there's there's ways that you could take that that step with support and awareness and uh, the ability like 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 hugs nice warm hugs around you to be to be able to do it where you don't feel alone because when you're stepping out of an identity and then into a new one i would imagine for a period of time there you could very easily feel like you don't have an identity yep. you know? and yep. i know this from personal experience you know i'm in the 40 years i've had on this planet um i've you know had various different identities that i feel um you know i've been seen as or in and around whether people even think about that of me at all is sure. complete completely a different story yes but but you know i do go through these identity models in my mind you know there was paul glazer the uh you know the, the student and then uh athlete footballer and then musician and then personal trainer and then you know there's all these different um steps and identity shifts that take place but ultimately when you're when you're moving into something like you've said in the past about that <laughs> <laughs> um like you've said in the past when you um you are shifting from one thing into another i lost my train of thought now um it's what happens. This is this is the this is the modern world. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, you, you can. I'll, I'll turn my phone off there. Um, 
So, so, so when you when you're stepping into a new identity, it can be an incredibly dirty experience because you can feel naked and bare. Yes, yes, it's so true. The, the the analogy that I really love with it is, you're you're standing on a on an island in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, and the island is starting to sink, and you're going, oh shit, this island is starting to sink. I have to go somewhere else. This can't work anymore. Mm. But it had all those banana trees and look at my home i built that home and yeah oh, it's like yeah dude but it's sinking it's like yeah <laughs> but the banana tree is so you eventually finally go okay i can't be on this island anymore so you start to swim out into the pacific ocean and where's the next island you don't know you also don't know which way to swim you know that old seneca quote if um if a man knows not which way he sails no wind is favorable so mm. it's uh where do i swim to so you are you know there's this potential for you to sink and drown. Mm. But then the next question is, you realize that you can no longer be who you were. Now the daunting question is, <clears throat> who do you want to become? As soon as you figure out what you want, or perhaps due to limiting belief systems, what you want to want, mm. now we have a vi- an aim and that's when we can start finding that next island for you. But 100%, man, I couldn't agree with you more. That time in between standing on two islands is so existentially troubling because I don't know who I am anymore. It's, it's really terrifying, but I, I do believe, and I'll finish with this is that you find yourself by looking forwards. A hundred percent. And I think we discussed that briefly uh, in our last podcast. And um, I, I agree so much in that. And when you don't truly believe that with every inch and fiber of your being, it's so important to have those around you yes to be able to reinforce your journey and um you know the journey that you are taking and stepping into that new identity looking forwards mm. you know it, it would be so wonderful to say that everybody um can do this on their own uh you know without having resources around them and just say you know i want to be that person you know in the future as in three two one go now yes. but that, that's not the reality that we find ourselves in uh, more often than not. It's about having people around you. It's about remaining accountable in the most positive way possible. You know, it's like how, what, what an exciting journey. What, 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 a, what, what a wonderful, uh, cherished experience that you can go on and somebody can actually make sure or give you a greater chance of getting towards that destination. Yes, exactly. How cool is that? It's just wonderful. It's wonderful. And, and, and especially when you do, you do the, you know, so we have an unshakable project, you have, you know, the hero program, these things, the reason why there's a, there's a group element associated with this is because what often happens when people are starting to change is, oh, it's easy for you, Tom, you know, or easy for you, Paul, you guys, you know, you, you've got this advantage or, or you didn't have to deal with this. Well, this is why a tribe is so important because especially when you're trying to affect change is because if you're surrounded by a whole bunch of other people who are also just taking that first step, they are feeling exactly what you're feeling at the same time, mm. you know, and, and they will go through all of the pains and, 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 and difficulties and challenges. I went through it, you know, mm. but I also remember the same feeling of seeing. So I remember my first uh, therapist appointment in 2014 and we started he was doing the whole the whole cbt thing which i'm you know it's 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 good i think there's also more stuff out there as well yeah. um you know and 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 he was he was a really good therapist i should say <laughs> not just 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 to denigrate him but um <laughs> he uh he started talking to me about meditation and um and i remember him saying what can tend to happen is you start to meditate is you start to um you see your thoughts further and further away so they're no longer who you are they're just a part of you like a foot or, or you know mm-hmm. almost obviously i'm paraphrasing um but i remember hearing that he's just said he's just told me what the what the view from the top of mount everest looks like and i haven't even reached base camp yet mm. i'm ages away and i don't even believe that kind of view is possible and yeah. i remember saying well how long have you been meditating for and he's like five years or something i'm like oh. so it's <laughs> like you need that vision of course you need that vision otherwise yeah. why cl- climb mount everest mm-hmm. but doing it with other people I mean, this might be a long bow to draw as a, as a pretty broad analogy, but you never see someone climbing Mount Everest by themselves, you know? Totally, totally. Why not? It's like, of course you need to be safe, <laughs> <laughs> but having someone walk with you is important. 
But there's a safety in uh, there's a safety in numbers, and there's a safety in being able to uh, achieve any goal together. And you know th- that whole base camp Everest uh, analogy. It's like, well, let's let's reverse engineer that back into daily, um, uh, you know, landmarks that we yep. can we can achieve. You know, we're not going to be looking at the summit from day one. In fact. It's been proven um, through scientific studies to that that if you constantly are looking at that end goal, your chances of achieving that goal are vastly diminished mm. versus being able to chunk back and reverse engineer what your um, what your little uh, signposts are along the way. Nice. You know, elite athletes they don't look at you know they don't visualize the the end mark in front of them they visualize you know the butt of the guy in front of them and just yes. stay in that in that in that kind of focused state because that visual is going to keep them moving forward and then once they get in front of that the butt of that person in front of them <laughs> and they then they set another goal in front of them you know yes. And it's it's really really important to be able to have these kinds of um these landmark steps along the way totally it, it yeah it's so true isn't it you you um you, you need both and sometimes you need to balance balance both i you know i think about jujitsu um i think about how wonderful it would be to have a black belt you know um but i also think that the black belt is impossible unless i begin to just enjoy going to jujitsu you know sure. um there's a, there's a wonderful book called mastery not not robert green ah, okay um but there's some other george i can't remember his last name but he wrote, he was studying successful people and he was looking at a lot of NBA players, Michael Jordan, Larry Bird, Larry Bird cool. and so forth. And um, he, 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 wrote a, he wrote a quote in that book, which I loved. And he said, um, practice isn't something that you do, it's something that you are. Mm. So I think there's another element to, you know, to all of this, which is also finding what kind of goals really are important to you. You know, because and you can you can imagine a scenario of, you know, 20 something kid as at uni studying law because his parents are both lawyers and mm-hmm. his love is, you know, their love subconsciously is conditional based upon his success in the legal <laughs> world. And uh, and then you start thinking, well, oh, God, I suck at uni. I'm, I'm so shit. You know, I'm, I'm never passing it. You know, it's really stressful to me all the time. And then all he thinks about is um, doing backflips because he's a gymnast. He just can't stop and he's obsessed and he, and he does gymnastics for six hours every day mm-hmm. when he's not at uni. And I think that's another important element here as well is like when it comes to changing and maybe it's fitness goals, you know, let's, let's, let's really bring it back here because I can live in the world of analogies. I'm sorry. Yeah. No, no, all good. Yeah. <laughs> if you're doing a fitness program and you really struggle to to adhere to the demands of the program, what it is, you know, helping busy, his busy parents as an example. Yep. Okay. Maybe you haven't found the exercise that you enjoy. You mm-hmm. know, my, my mom cannot stand being in a gym, mm-hmm. loves to dance, dances all the time. She's really fit That's and healthy. The solution, you know, like, uh, in, in the hero program, that's the first thing I ask people. It's like, yeah. what do you enjoy doing? You know, like, uh, stepping into this this world of um, you know achieving goals, we we always think that there's a only subconsciously we feel like there's only one way to be able to achieve a certain goal, and through the commodification of the world that we live in right now, we feel like it's only achieved through um, a forty five minute session of uh, whatever they're called. Um, TW, uh, what are all these uh, classes called? Training and hit training and yes, all, all, yes. all these different uh, classes where um, they're they're manufactured into these forty five minute morsels of goodness, and then people sit on their ass for fourteen hours for the rest yep. of the day, and yep. uh, and the reality is is you're just going to be you're going to be just as likely. Um, to 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 die early if you're still sitting on your ass for that period of time it's important to be able to be taking paraphrasing the quote that you just used you need to to be exercise yes. you, you don't do exercise you need to be exercise you need to you need to be an ex, a vessel that expresses exercise in everything they do yeah. now that doesn't necessarily need to be 
absolutely everything you do. But if you're on a walk, if you're if you're taking a meeting and all you require is your voice, well, God invented something called, you know, um, uh, earbuds right. where you can go for a walk, you can get access to vitamin D, you can start moving, getting oxygen and blood pumping through your your lungs and all the vital organs in your body, and you can do all of this whilst being productive in mm. a um, a working environment. And I guarantee you, you're going to start getting those creative juices flowing even more as well. And you're going to be giving to your circadian rhythm as well. So you're going to sleep better the night uh, that night. And this is all by simply getting up off your ass instead of sitting in front of a, a computer and moving around the block for half an hour as opposed to sitting in what we classically see a working environment to be. And that can take place in lieu of, um, you know, going to what we classically see as a working environment, or a, a training environment like a gym. You can go, you can train outdoors, you can be in touch with nature. And all of a sudden, these magical things start to happen because you are exercise, you're not doing exercise. Yeah, that, that, that's the thing, man, isn't it? It's, it's identity shifts, you know, that the, there's a, there's a great, um, there's a great example that Tony Robbins talks about. And he says, um, you know, you've got two smokers, both trying to quit. Have you heard this? No. Oh, it's, it's brilliant. And I don't think our people have either. Okay. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> that's good. I, I do repeat myself. Um, <laughs> he's, he's got two examples of two smokers who are both trying to quit. Um, someone comes up to, to each of them and says, hey, did you want a cigarette? Someone, person A says, no, nah, no, thanks. I'm trying to quit. Person B says, no, thanks. I'm not a smoker. Mm. Perfect example. If you're still identified... <laughs> you know as someone who you have heard it yeah it's brilliant it's brilliant yeah it's awesome uh, and then we can we can take that you know um even if you're someone who's trying to become a little bit more um a little fitter you know or a little bit less people pleasing you know it's hard it's a slow journey you know mm -hmm. but but all of this is very similar you know we need to get women to a place where they can start to see that not people pleasing is possible and mm -hmm. and for us it's very much a a state of you know, you might, I used this with the client very recently, you might have a situation where you're always buying friends, um, um, uh, you know, food or whatever it is. We're not asking you to say no straight away. That's the top of Mount Everest. We're not asking you to say, no, it's your turn. Maybe you can say, I'm sorry, I forgot my wallet today. Mm -hmm. Just start off small. You know, maybe mm -hmm. it's maybe mm -hmm. it's one push up. You know, there's a great um, uh, Atomic Habits is um is a really good book and and he was talking about one of his readers um what's his name dude james james clear james clear that's right yeah he was talking about one of his readers who lost like just an just an insane amount of weight you know and he said that he would show up to the gym every day for a month for five minutes yeah do like three exercises remember this yeah yeah, yeah. i remember I, i've digested that that book pretty heavily yeah it's just brilliant though. I just love that. It's like, well, you can't lose a lot of weight. <clears throat> yeah, but but I'm trying to create sustainable change. He's become, he's stepped into an identity of someone that he, he doesn't want to be a person that is trying to get right. fit. He is a person that expects to wake up every day and step into that gym. Yes. He's becoming an athlete, yes. right? He's not trying to do the expression of exercise he is now an athlete he is the person he is the identity and he did that by achieving expressing himself through bite-sized actions that he knew he was going to be able to achieve through five minute excursions to to the gym because he knew that was going to be achievable regardless of what was going on around him mm. walk up go for a walk on the treadmill whatever it is and then he'd come back but by rote learning that, by expressing and, and reinforcing that through his environment, all of a sudden, he is now an athlete. Yes, yes, exactly. And what were the results? Didn't he lose like a hundred pounds or something like that, or just? I, I'm, not, I'm not sure a hundred percent of the uh, the outcome, but I want to actually find a. Um, it's in and around this quote, uh, in and around what you're talking about. So I'm yeah. terrible, please. Yeah, yeah, sure. But I mean, you know, that that's the thing. I think as, as human beings, and this is what happens because the mind um, is very good at self-regulation and in, in an effort to achieve 
uh, what's called homeostasis, which is basically just a fancy word for balance. But when you're in a very severe amount of pain, you're going to see a very, very clear greener grass, right? So what that means for us on a practical basis is that we try to just fix all our problems in a day. This mm. is what we need. Sometimes it's with escapism. I'm so in pain. I need porn, food, shopping, sex, uh, whatever it is, insert, you know, um, mm. addiction here that, that, you know, is, is pleasurable. Yeah. The same thing can happen though, when you start to make change and you go, okay, well, this is what I need. I need to just, I need to go to the gym. You know, now I'm speaking for personal experience because when yeah. I, and I have, I was in a very rigid way of thinking and I would, um, I'd eat a whole heap of food because I wanted that pleasure. I would feel so ashamed about myself that I would train all day, mm. nine to five all day. And I was the pain that I experienced the next day. I remember sitting, I remember feeling like I wasn't enough unless sitting on the toilet was excruciating for me, mm. my glutes and my legs. And, you know, yeah. and OCD was lots of different variations for me as well. But that thing of like, I have to fix all my problems in one day. So I understand, I mean, the struggle for me, if I wanted to start a fitness journey to, to, to go to the gym for five minutes every day, mm. because I know that long-term it's about habit change would be mm. so hard, but that is how you do it. A hundred percent. And the quote, which I found is it's not about the result. It's about the person you become achieving that result. Yeah. Yeah. And we look so far, we, we, we often look so focused on what the actual result is, but if we focus on who we are becoming, achieving that the result takes care of itself. Totally. Totally. And dude, I think, um, you know, to, to come full circle, um, to, to some, We've spoken at length about identity change, how identities change, what to expect on that path. Mm. It's a lot. And that's why tribe is so important. You know, hey man, are you feeling, yeah, dude, I feel the same. And you need, you have to have that. If you're, if you are courageous enough to <clears throat> set an ideal for yourself, the expectation that you're going to feel is immense straight away. And well done on being brave enough to set that you want to climb Mount Everest. Pfft, whoa. Okay. Awesome. Hey, go shoot for the stars. Yeah. But having a team with you that can support you, a coach, a mentor, a friend, mm -hmm. whatever it is, someone to rely on and go, I just can't do this leg. Can you carry my bag? Sure. Of course. You know, that's how you're going to get there. I just, I really don't think it's, it's, it's possible by yourself. Look, if someone responds to this and goes, Hey, it's possible. I'm like, I'm sorry. But I couldn't do it. I wasn't strong will enough. <laughs> but, but 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 you're right. The, the, the point is, it's is it's easier and it's more natural to do it with those around you. Right. You know, right. Stepping out of uh, an identity and stepping into some something new is it's not just foreign. It's scary as all hell because. Yep. It's unfamiliar, you know. You're you're stepping into this new um, way of being. Well, everything you do, your subconscious is going to be like, "Hang on, this is totally unfamiliar." Yeah. And also, it's life has worked really, really well, or life has worked uh, the way I said I've survived. Right. I didn't die. I didn't die and I've survived and it's really, really familiar. Why the hell would I make life hard for myself yes. stepping into this new hardship, you know? Like I'm going to go back and especially if it's not validated immediately, then um, I'm, I'm going to definitely go back because yes. that was more simple that way. Yes. So if you've got people around you to be able to say, hang on, you're doing this for a reason and we've got your back. Yeah. And you've got teachers around you to be able to show you the way because they've been able to take steps that are very, very similar in their sense, then, you know, that's going to be a proven method that has worked time and time again. hundred percent, man. I think that what you said is so correct. You know, when you have people around you that are, that are doing the same thing, they're the ones who say, you can do this. It's hard. I'm feeling it too. And you need that. Yeah. The teachers and the mentors, they're the ones saying, Hey, you can do it. And I'm telling you life is better. Yeah. So it's not just wh whenever you get that thought of, Oh, I mean, I survived. It wasn't that bad, you know, you know, coming from the clinic, Oh, you know, he didn't hit me that much or, you know, I didn't A, B and C. 
when you have someone going, oh my God, this is really hard. I can do it though. I can do it though. You need that. And then you go, hey, this is way better over here. You know, mm-hmm. it's way, way, way better. Being a butterfly is better than a caterpillar. Mm-hmm. Walk, get out, get you out, get out of the chrysalis. You can do it. <laughs> Spot on. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Well, yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a really, really uh, concise kind of uh, sum up of uh, roundabout way of what we, we we've been discussing here. And that's, that's all around community guidance and, and accountability. And I, and I think um, if you're struggling to take those steps to be able to move towards the identity shift that you want to be able to, you know, step into, reach out to Tommy, reach out to me and we'd love to have a conversation with you, whether that's pointing you in the right direction of, um, you know, or giving you a resource or having a conversation about how to create your life in a way that you want to be um, in the future. We'd love to be able to help. Absolutely. Hey, for accountability purposes, we're excited to adhere to a weekly podcast session. 100%. Um, Paul, I love you, mate. You're a great friend and uh, yeah, love our conversations. Yeah, same to you, Tommy. And I'm really excited for this project, bud. 100%.